Today we're going to create a quick and easy neon glow text effect, just like you saw in the thumbnail. To start with, let's create a dark background. So I'm going to flip the fill and stroke here and maybe get rid of the stroke by clicking on it and clicking none. So now I have black or any sort of darker color you want to use for the background. Hit OK and let's create a rectangle the size of our background. You can click and drag from one corner to the other. It should lock you into place with smart guides. Smart guides are up in the view drop down, down to smart guides. Just have those check marked. Next, we're going to lock this rectangle in so we can go up to object, down to lock, selection and we selected that rectangle so now it's locked as our background let's create a little bit of text out here press t for the type tool and type out something i'm going to type out the word neon and go back to that selection tool and scale it up but make sure you hold shift so it scales up in proportion and we're just going to create something out here this size now i'm going to change the font Script fonts work really well. I've got one here called Brittany Signature that I'm gonna use. Once we have this selected, I'm gonna go up to Fill and select None. So we can't even see our text, but we do still have our text selected. Let's go up to Window, down to Appearance. The Appearance panel is super powerful here in Illustrator. We can actually add fills to our text here in the Appearance panel. This button down here will add a new fill and we can adjust this fill to white. So now we have a white fill for our text. And what I actually want to do is create a new swatch. So click on this color, create a new swatch, and we're going to make sure this is a global swatch and hit OK. We have this global swatch here. We can drag it down to the end of our panel. So we're going to select this color every time. Now with this first fill, what we can actually do is add an effect and we can scroll down here to blur and add a Gaussian blur effect. Now this Gaussian blur, the first one you want to add here is maybe something like one pixel just adding a little blur to the edge. It might look a little pixelated, that's okay, we'll fix that in a bit. So we have this first fill completed here. I'm gonna hold Option or Alt, click and drag to duplicate this fill right above itself. And it's important that you drag it above and not below. Now with this fill above, I can actually drop it down, find that Gaussian blur, and edit this Gaussian blur to be three pixels instead of one. So we have a fill that has one pixel blur, fill that has three pixel blur. You can see where we're going with this. We might do like five fills. So hold option or alt, click and drag to duplicate above, adjust that Gaussian blur. We'll take this one to 10, same thing. Option or alt, click and drag above, adjust this next one. We'll take it to 25 and we'll do one final blur, alt or option, click and drag to move that up and we'll do 50. If your duplicate is not working, holding Alt or Option, you could always create a new fill and just add these effects in each time. Now we're gonna minimize all of these. Remember, we selected the same exact global swatch here for each of these. The reason we did that is because if we go to our swatches panel, you can go to Window, down to Swatches if you need to. We can double click on that swatch, select Preview, and really quickly change the color of our neon effect. Now, even though we can do this, we're not done yet. I'm gonna hit okay on that so I just have a cyan color. You might be noticing that the blur is cutting off on the edge. That's how Illustrator's previewing raster effects. Blur, Gaussian blur is a raster effect. So we can go up to effect, down to document raster effects settings. In here, there's two things we can do. The first is adding space around our object where we can preview these effects. We wanna make sure we add enough space. I'm gonna add 500 pixels around it. Once we hit okay, it might not change. What we need Illustrator to do is to re-render this effect. So what we could do is just kind of scale it just a little bit, holding Shift plus Option or Alt, and Illustrator's gonna re-render those effects. And now you can see that the blur does not get cut off. You might also notice that pixelation, right? It gets very pixelated down in here. One way we can help how that looks is to go to document raster and then instead of 72 PPI resolution, go to high resolution 300 and it's gonna re-render this stuff. And depending on your computer, this computer I'm on is fairly slow. So it's gonna take me a second to render that, but it looks a lot better once we render that out. A lot of the banding, a lot of the uh, pixelation goes away. Now I am going to turn that back off in my document to 72 because when we adjust effects, it has to re-render that every time. So when you're dealing with it, just know that if you export it, it's gonna be a higher resolution and look nicer than it appears. This just helps save CPU time so you're not having to load every single time you make a tiny adjustment. All right, now a lot of neon effects have a nice 
kind of hot center, like white in the center. How we're going to do that, make sure you have your object selected. We're gonna add another fill on top of this. I'm gonna hold Option or Alt to duplicate it, just like that. Now this top fill, I'm actually gonna remove the Gaussian blur, select it, hit the trash can. Instead, I'm gonna add an effect called Inner Glow. That's in Stylize down to Inner Glow. Now this Inner Glow, I'm gonna leave on screen, you can adjust the opacity to what you want. We are gonna make adjustment to the blur. Now you might have it looking like this on the edge and make sure you have preview so you can see. The edge means it's gonna start on the outside of our object. I actually wanna start it in the center because we want that sort of that hot part of this neon effect to be in the center of our object. Now if we adjust the blur, I'm gonna use my arrow keys to go up and down by a pixel. We can see it take effect and you'll notice that as we push this too far, we start to lose the inner glow. It only shows up in parts that are overlapping. So we need to bring that back to fit the text and the size of your text and how thick your font is and everything like that. You need to customize this so it looks the best for your specific use. In this one here, as I kind of go up and down, I think for mine, something around five, Probably five is working the best here. You can also adjust the opacity. So if you don't want it to be pure white, you can change that to 90%. So it's not quite completely white. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that at 100 just for the effect. Now you can hit okay. So this top one, this top fill has an inner glow. So if we zoom out on this, we have our neon effect. Actually, I'm gonna take that inner glow back to something like 90%. I think that 100% was a little too much. And our text itself, if we double click on it, is still editable. So I could type in some new text here, just like that. Now, one thing we can do to save ourselves some time so we don't have to make this every time, we can select this neon text effect, go up to Window, down to Graphic Styles. Inside of Graphic Styles, as long as that's selected, we can actually add a new graphic style right here. And if you wanna double click on that and call it Neon Fill, you could do that and hit OK. Now this saves us a lot of time because if we were to create a new object out here, like if I created a circle with the ellipse tool out here and I had it selected, I could actually just click this effect really quick to add that same exact effect to a new shape that has a fill. You might notice when you scale objects up and down, so if I scale this circle down, the effect either scales with it or it doesn't. You can adjust that in the transform panel. So go to window, down to transform, make sure that's selected. Mine's actually open right now. So I've got the transform panel right here. It's also in your properties if you click these three dots. And you'll see scale strokes and effects. Depending on what you're doing, you may or may not want this on, but it'll actually scale all those effects with the circle. So the circle will retain its same effect scaled up and down. If you don't want that, then uncheck this. And if you scale it down, you'll notice that looks substantially different than the other one. Now, if you're trying to apply this to something that's a stroke, for instance, so let's say I brushed something out here with the brush tool like this. And now you can see that the brush tool is actually a stroke. Well, once you get the stroke to equal the size that you want it to be, let's say I wanted it to be a two point stroke. You'll notice that if you go up to your graphic styles and apply this same effect, it looks a little weird. That's because instead of a stroke, it's applying a fill to this line. So it's trying to fill in these spaces. So if we undo that, if you have something that is outlined or it's a stroke, what you can do is go up to object down to expand appearance. You won't be able to edit that stroke later, but because it expanded it into a fill, you can actually apply that same effect to the stroke, to the line now, because it was actually, it turn that stroke into a shape. So now we could include something that even had a stroke into our design and apply that neon effect to it. That's it, that's how to create a really quick editable neon effect here in Adobe Illustrator.